Hello, welcome to another video where I talk about my experience of doing another one of the CS50 courses. So if you haven't watched my other videos, these are a, a group of courses which are run by Harvard X. You know, they create the material, they produce all of the content, but it's delivered through edX. That's basically where you sign up for the course. Now, I'll show you in a moment, but as I've said before, when you go through edX, it mentions here about a verified certificate for $299. Every one of the courses I've done so far, I've got a certificate by or via the Harvard X site. And I'll show you in a moment how that works. Um, the two are basically interconnected. And in the course of doing this course, you do find yourself sort of basically jumping in or ending up in the actual Harvard X infrastructure. But this is where you normally start off. When you register for the, register for the course, you end up on this page when you, when you um, enroll for the course on Harvard X. So today's video is about the CS50 AI, as it's called, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence with Python. So you're normally greeted by this sort of community section. So, you know, basic ways you can reach out to give the course more of a community feel. So there's seven lectures. And in addition to the lectures, there are quizzes. Now, for this course, the quizzes... Um, yeah, they're not marked. Um, they have a reveal on them, so you can reveal the answer as you go. So you can test yourself. Basically, it's in order to test your your knowledge of the course, your sort of understanding of certain terminology. There's also a project for every of the seven lectures. So the way I did it was basically, you know, each one of these because I've got time to spend on this, I did a lecture a week and then the associated quiz and project. For the project, some there might be two parts to it, some one. It just depends on what's being taught. And if you've done other courses, you may notice that this actually is probably slightly less than some of the other courses in terms of the volume of coding you have to do but all of the projects here are all coding projects and they all involve python and so once you've once you're in this bit you can then use these sections to jump to the appropriate part of the course now i think it's in here you will notice up the top here it does warn you that you or you should already take CS50 itself. And yeah, it's definitely a good idea. Um, there's also this note about or have prior programming experience in Python. My advice would be to actually do both CS50X, which is the... Um, yeah, the CS50 they're talking about here, and CS50P, which is the Python one. And I found those two together were really good sort of preparation for this. Um, mainly because the, the CS50, I think, taught the sort of a lot of the background algorithm understanding. And then the CS50P was the coding side of things. And what we'll come on to another little piece of advice I've got as well. So as you click down through this, we just go, if I just go in, I've already got these ready to go. So the introduction one is pretty straightforward. Just a single video, just introducing you to this particular course. So it's Brian Yu who teaches the course. And at this point, um, David Malan is also in this video, although he doesn't appear 
in any of the videos, at least from, from my memory. Um, so if we move on to the, the sort of first major lesson or week of the course, these all have the same basic format. So you have this first page, which is a link to the lecture, the notes, the slides, the source code and so on, the quiz and the project. And straight away as I hover here, if you look in the bottom left hand corner, you can see where the links go. And you'll notice that, as I've said, you know, these all jump out to a Harvard domain. So you sort of jump out of here. Now saying that, you can actually watch the video from here. So this second one is the video and you can actually just watch it from here. You can also download the video file and download the transcripts. Um, when I first started doing the CS50 courses, I used to spend a lot more time with these sort of transcripts than I do now. So when I was going through this, I was benefiting from like a multi-screen environment. So while I'm watching the video, so this is if you click through the video link and go to the uh, Harvard X site. In fact, there, there's two places it, it could take you. It can take you here, um, depending on how you've navigated around, or you can see there was a different one, which is CS50IO, but they're the same video. So whether you watch it through here, whether you click on that link, or you end up on this video through coming coming through one of these side links once you're in the Harvard uh, domain, yeah, you, it's all the same video. And we'll come on to another another route you can go down because you'll notice that these are all, um, yeah, piping YouTube videos. So I'll talk about that in a moment. Now, once you're into this video, you can also get to the same material. So there's multiple ways of navigating this which is really cool but most of the time what I tend to do is sit in this I'll have the you know the video on one screen I've got three screens set up I'll have the lecture notes on another screen so there's all the lecture notes for this particular week so here comes my first observation um, as I've said you know numerous guys and probably already in in this video I really admire the level of work that goes into these courses. Now one thing I and these are more going to be observations rather than criticism one thing I did notice with this is there was much more of a tendency here to have to fill in the gaps so what you'll notice is when you do these CS50 courses you have the the videos you have the notes and then you have the projects and anything else you might be asked to do. So there might be a few other test things. So as I've said on other courses, um, other part of the CS50 courses, there's additional supplemental material there that sort of fills the chasm, the gap between the video and the notes and the projects, which sort of help you, put you in a better position to do the projects. So, you know, on other courses you're sort of served up a bit more and there's a few more I suppose training wheels there on some courses more than others now on this one there does seem to be to me at least a bigger gap between the video and the lecture and the project in terms of the amount of additional sort of research you've got to do to be able to solve the problem you'll notice straight away if you've been through this there's not much code examples in the lecture notes and in actual fact that's the biggest difference I've noticed between this and other courses is there seem to be a lot more live coding and coding samples generally um, than the other courses but that didn't surprise me to some degree because of this course and as it says in the disclaimer you're sort of building on the other courses already so i think you know they're assuming because you've done those courses there's not quite the same amount of hand holding required but just a heads up there there's not so much code in the lessons as there is on other courses if you've done the other courses i mentioned about the uh, the video already as I said, you know, you can bounce out 
and ultimately you know there's the video on if you look at it through YouTube the quizzes are pretty straightforward um, there's normally like I don't know between I would say four and five questions in the quizzes and you just go through and then you know you can check your answer so there's nothing to submit here now for each of the lessons and there's this joke as usual about it starting off with zero um, you know connected with obviously indexing in uh, in programming languages um, you know, zero base indexing there's sometimes two most of the time there's two there are often one uh, one project uh, one things one thing to do sometimes there's two things to do that's a better way of saying it getting my getting my my words tied there um yeah so if we use this as an example here's the um the one for the degrees one so it's a six degrees of Kevin Bacon. It's similarish to something that I did on one of the other courses using, I think, the same data set CSV file. So it lays out the background, the problem, how to download the files. The other thing I noticed with this as well, and this fits in with a, a lot less hand holding. There's a lot less hand holding in terms of setting up the environment or you know, getting the code in there. Once again, I use the my my instance of Visual Studio Code, which was set up when I first started doing the CS50 courses. Still, still runs. I think as long as you sort of fire it up every um, month or so, it'll it'll be fine. Um, if you're not using it for a while, you normally get an email to say you know you need to log in, um, so the instance doesn't go away. And what I did was I actually created my own little cheat sheet um, to make sure I set my projects up with some little bits of snippets of code to use in Visual Studio Code. So I had like, you know, the code to download this um, and then the code to do other things like, um, you know, unpacking it, um, switching to the the correct directory, all those things. So I was sort of consistent and didn't forget everything, anything. Um, the other thing is there's the check 50 thing, which allows you to check your work before you submit it. There's also the style 50. So invariably what I would do is I would run style 50 before I even started coding. Make sure the style was OK, because the other thing with these, a lot of this, quite a bit of the front end code is already written. And I think I pretty I think, yeah, all of all the assignments you actually are just writing functions to do things. The front end code and some of the handling code is already done for you. You're just completing functions. And you might find in this one, there was just one function, I think. Yeah. Um, other ones, there might be two, three, four, maybe in five functions. And I found that um, the level of difficulty for me peaked around here in terms of the amount of stuff you had to do. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is it did help me considerably that I'd already done a course, albeit several years ago, on data science. So I think pretty much all of the algorithms that were discussed, I had um, been through the theoretical and some of the programming aspects of them. Also, the Python libraries that we were using, I was already familiar with some of them. So that helped an awful lot. And if I'd have had to have gone in cold without any sort of data science uh, experience, it would have been a, a lot, lot harder, I think. Um, so, yeah, I, I would say, you know, it's doable with just doing other courses that are part of CS50 but it is made a lot easier if you've kicked the data science tires and the 
AI libraries and machine learning libraries already in Python somehow. That's probably what all I'm saying there. So then we've got a tic-tac-toe one as well. So again, understanding logic for playing the game. Because of course what you're doing here is not you're not just creating a game to play tic-tac-toe, but um, creating a, like an AI opponent. But this is pretty, and you can see here we have quite a number of functions. Some are smaller than others, some are pretty straightforward, like some are just a couple of lines of code. That's all. Now, when you come to finally submit it, so, you know, there's the check, there's the style. I, because I already have everything already pre-configured and I was using this online instance of Visual Studio Code for CS50, I was able to do this all within CS50. But there are ways, you know, using GitHub, if you configure a local copy of uh, Visual Studio Code, which I actually also did just for fun, <laughs> to see if I could do it. Um, yeah, so there's various ways you can push out the uh, the final submission once you've tested it all and got the style and checked everything out. I had a weird, um, funny thing happen with this actually, where on one of these... I was able to actually um, pass the check, but the code was actually crashing. Now I actually fixed it so the code was running because that seemed a bit of a, um, a cheat to me. But yeah, I just got myself in a position where sometimes when I'm um, writing the code, I'll run this check algorithm sort of ahead of the game just to see what I've got to left to do. And... Um, I'd done some tweaks and I got myself to a position where I actually ran the check before I actually ran um, some updated code. So I'd done some updates and bizarrely um, it passed even though when I ran the code um, the program crashed um, because this check is actually interrogating the functions to see that they worked okay and the functions individually and I'd inadvertently which is rather amusing created some sort of logic bomb which the these weren't testing for uh, it was caused through I think under a certain instance it would pass a um, certain object which um, the program would cause the program to crash but wasn't tested for in the uh, in the check 50 stuff so yeah that can happen and i think i've heard of that happening before actually where passes the test but something else crashes in the code so something to watch out for and there's a few extra sort of warnings here if you're doing it outside of because if you do it this way within Visual Studio, however you've managed to set things up to do that, or if you're using online instance, um, it will ignore the um, supplemental files or folders. Whereas if you're using Git, the reason why you're able to do this as well is because and I went through this in another episode, but I'll remind you again, is that this is all this all hangs together um, with a GitHub account. So in order to do this, any CS50 course, pretty sure, even the, the early one, even the, the easier ones, you have to have um, a GitHub account set up. Um, so for this one, I think the bare minimum, and of course it's always difficult because everything's already set up, I had to have GitHub and Visual Studio Code for CS50. Um, I've only ever used Replit on one of the other CS50 courses. Uh, one of the, I think it was Introduction to Computing one. One of those ones. Yeah, so yeah, these two, GitHub and 
Visual Studio Code were the main heavy lifters of this. And then, like I said, the, the rest of the calls, you know, different stuff, same configuration. And on some of these, um, you might find that there was only one uh, one part of the project. Now, when you're all done and done, so as you're going along, you're completing this grade book on the Harvard X side of things. And here's my grade book, which is now complete. So yeah, as you submit everything and it marks it, um, and that's done in you know moments really, it'll um, yeah it'll just tick it off. So you can see that degrees tic tac toe nights. So here it's all subdivided down. So this will give you some idea for the different units. Um, where there's one and where there's two so you can sort of see here so a and b means there were two parts of the project or well, there were two projects i suppose more correctly and then there's so for, for project three week three there was just one part as i mentioned all of this stuff is actually you know, the videos are piped through from YouTube. They've been uploaded to YouTube as well. So you can watch these, the course, without even signing up to um, edX. And edX account's free anyway. But yeah, if you just wanted to watch these for information purposes, you can. There's a playlist. It's pretty easy to find. And just in sort of closing... So there's 15 CS50 courses in total now. I don't think this has changed since I started doing these. And uh, yeah, so you've got CS50X, which is the sort of OG one, uh, the main one. Then there's a program with Python. There's a secure cybersecurity one. Here's the one we're talking about today. Web programming with Python and JavaScript. Uh, there's an SQL one. Data Science with Python, Mobile App, Understanding Technology, Game Development. Oh, Introduction to Programming with R. I didn't see that before. Okay. I should add that to my list. Didn't, didn't pick up on that. Uh, introduction to Programming with Scratch. I'm Yeah, some of these, so these two I know about. I think these two I'll have to check to make sure they're the same um, components. Oh no, no, I did. Sorry, that's. The, I've even forgot which ones I've done. I'll bring up my list in a moment, but I think this one might be missing off my list. So I'm sort of keeping this um, tally of stuff. So there you go. See, so this is what I've done so far, and I think, yeah, this is the order that I did it in. So I decided to do a bit of a sort of toe dip and did CS50 for technology. Um, then I did CS50 for Python. Then um, my wife was curious about this one. So I said, well, I'd, I'd do it and report back. So I did it and it was really similar to, to this actually in some of the core. I think about four of the six weeks were quite similar in some way, but it was worth doing. And it was good because it reinforced the learning. Then there was the CS50X, the main one. This is the one I've just completed, which we're talking about. You can see the amount of hours is a lot higher here, which I would expect, you know, that, that accounts for the fact that I've said, you know, it did, does help if you've done a bit of data science and additional Python library work. Um, and that sort of help out there, maybe reduce them a number of hours. But like I said, I had the benefit of being able to work, you know, pretty much if I wanted work all week on these. I mean, generally what I did with these is set aside three days, three old days a week to work on each lesson. You know, watch videos and do the assignments and just play around a bit. Um, so these are the ones I'm going to do but haven't done yet. Now, because I'm starting that, um, on a bit of a 
seven programming languages in seven weeks jag but i'm not planning on spending seven weeks on it i'm planning on spending a lot longer possibly so i may um put these on the back burner for a while um but i am keen to to work my way through these three and then there's three down here which i may do at some point but i have no real desire to necessarily do one on games or the law one which i think is just a variation on on what you know these two in some way and then the scratch one now scratch gets covered i think twice now once on cs50x and uh once on one of these other courses i'm pretty sure maybe on, on both it's funny how you know even though i was only doing them last year in in 2023 and we're into 2024 now i don't remember specifically you know what was in what course because there is a good degree of overlap which again is good so i probably need to add after i've done this video or take a look at this because um yeah this looks like it might be one i didn't spot before now sometimes some of these that come up um or well, there was a couple more that came up which i left off because they didn't have the same format and it didn't look like you know you could get a certificate free through harvard x so i didn't bother with those but i'll check again so there we have it. Hopefully that was of use to anybody that's thinking about doing the course. Thanks once again for watching. Bye for now. And I will catch you in a future episode.